Julia Rafin. I'm an assistant professor at Boston University, and I direct the COVID-19 U.S. state policy database, and I'll be presenting on state policies to prevent COVID-19 among children. This figure summarizes hospital admissions among children in the United States between August 1st of 2020 and now. And you can see that we're experiencing record levels of hospital admissions among children and that they're rising at a record pace. They are, are um, uh, at more than 2000 per week at this point. Um, and we do see that the worst case scenarios that Dr. Mayorga described are playing out. This is the state of Alabama, which is experiencing that worst case scenario. They started school around here. It's been just two weeks and I've never seen a curve that looks like this. Um, and this is what we, we face with schools opening right now. I, I also agree with Dr. Caballero that this is a policy choice. These, this record rise in child hospitalizations is not inevitable. And it's especially sad because uh, it's just months before children become eligible for vaccines that reduce the severity of COVID-19 and the likelihood of hospitalization. And that makes the urgency of reducing childhood hospitalizations that much more extreme. So my summary of my presentation is that Delta is different and that we should take it very seriously. It's different for children. We're still learning about it, but to the extent that we can, we can see what's happening, it's very concerning. It's especially important to protect kids until they can be vaccinated. And these are CDC data on vaccination rates among children under 12 who can't be vaccinated yet uh, uh, in the population, among children 12 to 15, and among children 16 to 17 who also continue to have low rates of vaccination as they enter school. So the key actions I'll recommend in this presentation are state indoor mask policies to reduce community transmission. And by state indoor mask policies, I mean masks for everyone, not just for kids, uh, but also masks for kids. Redoubling efforts to vaccinate children 12 to 17 who are eligible for vaccines and planning for rapid and equitable vaccine delivery for children under 12. We have strong evidence that state community face mask mandates are associated with reduced COVID-19 cases and deaths. These are the strong, strongest two studies that we have on policies. Uh, and that's why I present these two, these two studies in particular. Both of these studies compared trends in COVID-19 case growth before states implemented mask mandates relative to states that never implemented mask mandates and their case growth over time. So here, this is, um, this is all summarized in one figure and one regression, controlling for other policies that changed at the same time. And you can see that, that both policies actually use different data sets on state policies and took place over different time periods, but they find strikingly similar results that after state passed mask mandates, there were reductions in cases that actually grew in magnitude over time. Uh, with each person whose case is averted, that averts more cases. And people have said, well, what, what do we know about Delta? Um, just like we can use treatments that we've learned about earlier in the pandemic, in the case of Delta, we can also use prevention policies that we've learned about earlier in the pandemic with the case of Delta. So you've seen a lot of individual level evidence presented by Drs. Marr and Prather and other um, presenters in the presentation. And here you can see the, the policy level evidence that masks are very effective. And to the extent that they are effective, Every person whose case is averted prevents five to eight more cases with Delta. Uh, and so I would actually expect that we might see an even greater impact of mask policies in the face of the Delta variant. Community transmission is strongly associated with child hospitalizations. So these data are based on Delta. These are the New York Times data on total cases per 100,000, the weekly average for the last week. And I pulled data on child hospitalizations per 100,000 from August 12th. Uh, and you can see that there's a strong relationship between what's happening uh, across the state and um, for, for total case transmission and what's happening with child hospitalizations. And if you can reduce total cases, you can reduce child hospitalization. State mask policies uh, may, uh, be, may, uh, may make some people feel uncomfortable or, um, I, or may, um, may not be as, as enjoyable as not having masks on, but they are better than our other alternatives to reducing COVID. So these are the other policies that we have to reduce COVID. Um, indoor dining closures, broad business closures, stay at home orders, and school closures. 
And if we have no policy to control COVID, then what we often end up with is the worst, the school closures that reduce education, um, that keep kids away from each other um, and from the social benefits of school, um, and they keep parents home and have, having a hard time working. Uh, and so indoor mask policies are ideal because they reduce transmission in everyone, vaccinated people and unvaccinated people, including all kids under the age of 12. And they have little downside and they prevent policies with worse harms. Uh, they're better for our health and for the economy and for education. Not everyone may want to wear masks forever. I, uh, you know, and, and um, I think mask mandates for the whole population at all times may reduce COVID most effectively, but um, there are also policy examples of state mask policies linked to data so that people have a clear on and off point for when they, they wear masks. Um, and I like this example from Nevada. Um, it's a very simple policy. I've actually copied it here because I know that there are so many local communities working to make policies right now. And the language is very simple. They basically say individuals wear will wear masks in accordance with CDC guidance and they link it to the CDC guidance. So if we have a more um, virulent variant that comes along, something that, that has a higher death rate, the CDC could change the threshold and it would automatically update this policy. If we have a variant that comes along that, um, that takes over that is a lot less severe, great. <laughs> I hope that happens and the CDC could change the policy and, um, and the policy would only turn on if it, if it really became a problem. So I think this is a very smart approach to controlling the pandemic and living with the pandemic. It turns on and off. Policymakers don't need to go to back to the drawing board every time. And this helps control the pandemic so it doesn't control us and our schools and our kids. So school mask policies, what do we know about them? The best evidence on state mask policies come, is from the studies that I showed you. We also have very strong individual level evidence that masks are a key prevention strategy. Now, state indoor mask policies for everyone and not just for kids are most effective for kids and adults. And state and school mask policies are the bare minimum. Masking must be complete to protect people. So it needs to be in all places when people are indoors around each other. And that includes finding safe spaces for kids to be able to have lunch and, and eat snacks outside um, or spread out as far as possible from each other. And the discomfort, again, is less harmful than school closures or severe illness in friends or family. So people are worried about children's mental health. And I think they um, the severe illness among their peers and, and among their family members who may get COVID from them would be much more severe. Um, I also appreciated that the Kaiser Family Foundation found that children found um, not being allowed to talk in line um, more onerous than having to wear a mask. And, and so, um, you know, I, I think we, we can reconsider talking in line, but we should keep mask mandates because they're very important for protecting everyone. Changing policies in response to changing disease is a good thing. Um, Israel reimposed their mask policy in June based on the data they were seeing on Delta. Canada, Alberta recently changed their mask policy and, and reinstated it. And our CDC scientists recommend that we change our mask policy in the United States. They say universal masking is essential. That means masks for everyone to reduce transmission of the Delta variant. There's also widespread public support for mask mandates. 80% of Americans approved federal, state, and local indoor mask policies based on the most recent data. And these are earlier data suggesting that 69% of American adults supported local mask requirements. So in conclusion, most childhood hospitalizations are preventable and state indoor mask policies for everyone are key. We should deliver vaccines to children 12 to 17 quickly to avoid further overflows of pediatric hospital beds. And we should plan for rapid equitable vaccine delivery to children under the age of 12. Thank you.